My name is Christopher Brader, and I'm chair of the Department of French and Italian at the University of Colorado in Boulder. I joined you this morning in order to help celebrate commencement, to welcome your children, no longer children, our students, no longer our students, to the fellowship of educated persons. Commencements, however, shouldn't really be conducted in this form. They are events that should only be conducted in person. We gather with our students, their families, their loved ones, their friends, to celebrate their achievements and to mark an important milestone in their lives. And that is something that really should be done in the flesh. There are hands to be shaken. There are backs to be patted. There are group photographs to be posed for. There are cheeks to be kissed. And you can't really do any of those things remotely in the way we're obliged to do so much else these days. Still, as a humanist and professors of French and Italian are nothing if not humanists, I do find consolations. And as you'll have guessed from the decor behind me in this video, many of those consolations are found in books. As it happens, I've been engaged in feverish con conversation over the email for the past two or three days with uh, a dozen colleagues at seven or eight universities on two continents about one book in particular, the Wittenberg Sophocles. The Wittenberg Sophocles was an edition, a scholarly edition, in fact, of the complete tragedies of the ancient Greek poet Sophocles, published in 1547. As it happens, uh, in 1546, when the humanists like me who put together this edition were putting the final, final touches to it, they were obliged to close the university uh, by a plague. The plague in question, however, wasn't a coronavirus-inspired uh, one like the one we're suffering today. It was a plague of religious hatred and religious violence. The University of Wittenberg was a Protestant university. It was indeed the home of the great instigator of the Reformation, Martin Luther. The plague took the form of an imperial army dispatched by the Catholic Habsburg Emperor Charles V, to take Wittenberg in order to stamp out the virus of, of Protestantism and heresy once and for all. In any event, all of the scholars had to scatter, and yet they still conducted their work and their conversation remotely, despite their exile from their native home. The edition was indeed completed and published in 1547, a year before they were finally able to return to the university itself. There are many things about this story and this book um, that uh, give consolation and that serve as a kind of parable for our own times. Like us, our humanist forebears were forced to scatter and work remotely, uh, conducting their conversations through the mail. Um, like us, too, um, our colleagues persevered uh, despite all of the obstacles remaining true to their vocation, no what matter what the difficulties were. But I guess the truly astonishing thing about this particular edition, what makes this particular book so fascinating and so memorable and so exemplary, is this. It wasn't just an excellent edition of the plays, valuable though that was, and indeed the Wittenberg Sophocles became the foundational text for much of the scholarly uh, work that was done on Sophocles subsequently. The really exemplary thing about the Wittenberg Sophocles was that in the introductions to the plays and the commentaries on the plays, these humanists taught us how to read Sophocles. They taught us why Sophocles matters, what these ancient tragic plays have to tell us in the present of our own tragedies, whether religious in origin, as in 1547 in Wittenberg, or biological, as the one we're confronting today. They taught us how to read Oedipus as not only a bang-up play written in strict conformity to the classical rules, but as a meditation on the nature of fate and the nature of divine justice. They taught us to read Antigone not only as a stirring story about the second generation uh, after the, the self-blinding of, of, of Oedipus, 
but a story about political resistance and political justice, about the courage needed by Antigone herself to defy royal authority in order to do what nature and faith taught her she must do. I hope a little of that has been conveyed by the teaching we have offered your children, no longer children, our students, no longer our students, over the past four or five years. If we convey anything, I certainly hope it is that literature matters. It's not just that it offers consolations. It also offers lessons. And it isn't just that it teaches lessons. It presents an opportunity to think, to think about the past, to think about the stories, to think about the characters in those stories, but also to think about the world we inhabit and the choices we are obliged to make by the often tragic circumstances that confront us. So there you have it. It may not be in person. It may not be in the flesh. Uh, but we do hope that this virtual commencement will at least carry you and your loved ones some way uh, toward a fulfilling celebration of what should be a glorious day. This video will shortly be followed by others, uh, in particular my colleague Professor Masano Yamashita uh, will present the major and minor degrees and major and minor prizes uh, for our undergraduates, and my colleague Professor Warren Mahdi will present our graduate students um, for appreciation. Uh, I then will return at the very end um, to say goodbye. <laughs> but in the meantime, uh, I'm glad that you're here, and I hope that you will enjoy this uh, Jerry Reed uh, consolation. Bonjour. My name is Masano Yamashita, and I'm the Associate Chair of Undergraduate Studies for French and Italian. Je tiens à remercier tous les étudiants qui ont fini leurs études cette année. Vous avez travaillé dans des circonstances exceptionnellement difficiles et je tiens à vous remercier de la part du département et je vous salue pour votre courage, votre persévérance et votre grâce pendant cette année extraordinaire. I'll first begin by saluting and celebrating the French minors this year and I'll begin with those who finished their studies in the fall of 2019. Je félicite Diego Ariola, Maddie Clements, Samuel Evans, Virginia Lita, Alan Tett, Zoe Volpa, Richard Williams, and Zachary Zontek. For the spring of 2020, we celebrate the following French minors. Océane Andres, Catherine Belts, Alexandra Brack, Louisa Brott, Olivia Danheiser, Gretchen Devereux, Anushka Divikar. Margaret Elam, Chloe Green, Heidi Harris, Julian Yurkowicz, Kyle Kent, Louisa Kupfer, Laura Lafon, Marc Leroux, Alexis Levjac, Sydney McCain, Diego Campillo, Morgan Morel, Jean Christophe Owens, Sabrina Perry, Gabriel Ramos, George Devere Santi, Sarah Sashpel, Rachel Solko, Riven Sprinkle, Madeline Wagner, Tessa Weatherby, and Madison Wilson. In the summer of, this, of 2020, we'll be celebrating the following French minors, and I salute them now. Isabel Nelson, Tarek Youssef, Eliana Yatsko, and Sophie Donaldson Gilman. Congratulations to all of you. Felicitations à tous et à toutes. Bravo. Buongiorno. My name is Priscilla Craven, and it is with great pleasure that I announce our Italian minors for this year. Our Italian minors take six courses above the first year, everything from literature to film to art history to multiculturalism to Italian business and much more. They are a wonderful and lively group, and it's been delightful to have all of them in class. Uh, in fall 2019, Jenna Marie Coffey graduated with an Italian minor. And this spring 2020, we have Khalid Aldawood, 
Darcy Rose Angus, Naomi Elizabeth Elkins, Catherine Suzette Ellis, Colton Donald Holsapple, Raina Two Bears Miller, Isabella Catherine Pugliese, and Ariel K. Wiesner. Un applauso virtuale, a virtual applause. Congratulations to all of you. Auguri, arrivederci. I'd like to congratulate the following French majors for completing their capstone senior essay and their French studies this academic year. I'll begin with those who completed their BAs in the fall of 2019. Celeste Johnson and Patrick O'Mealy. I'd like to congratulate the French majors who in their final year complete a capstone essay in close consultation with one of the faculty members. This year, the students worked on a rich array of projects ranging from the exploration of boundaries in Marguerite du Duras to an analysis of the relationship between the colonized and colonizer in Cameroonian author Ferdinand Oyono. There was also an exploration of minimalism in Beckett and an analysis of the relation between architecture and literature in Nathalie Sarraud's Tropisme. I congratulate all of the French students for their projects. For the spring of 2020, I'd like to congratulate the following students. Darcy Angus, Caroline Card, Leslie McLafferty, Grant Powell, Joseph Resnick, and Laura Rossman. Congratulations to you all. Félicitations à tous et à toutes. My name is Warren Marty, and I'm the Director of Graduate Studies in the Department of French and Italian. This year has been an exceptional one for our graduate program, insofar as we have five students earning their degrees this May, one earning her PhD, and four earning their MA degrees. We look upon this with mixed emotions insofar as we're very, very happy for our students to earn their degrees and to go out in the world and to see how they progress um, from here on. Uh, we're sorry to see them go, however, because during their time with us, they've become members of our department, uh, contributing very significantly to our missions in teaching and as young scholars as well. So I congratulate them one and all. Uh, and I'd like to introduce them to you very briefly. Keenan Brown earned an MA degree, and I believe that next year he'll be studying in France. Marie Gaudreau is a captain in the Air Force. She did an MA degree with us, and she has already gone back to serve in the Air Force. I believe that she intends eventually to teach French at the Air Force Academy. Ashton Neiswanger earned her MA with us. Next year, she'll be pursuing a PhD at the University of Virginia. Marketa Rajewski, our final MA laureate, is functionally trilingual in Czech, English, and French. She earned her MA with us, and I believe that she's interested in childhood education, perhaps with a bilingual component. Jocelyn Franklin earned her PhD in our department this spring, and she's done really superb work during her time among us. In order to introduce her to you, I'd like to call upon my colleague, Elise Arnoux Bloomfield, who directed Jocelyn's dissertation. My name is Elizabeth Bloomfield. I'm an associate professor in the French and Italian department. I am here to present Jocelyn Sutton Franklin with her doctoral degree. Jocelyn has done an amazing job with her dissertation which she wrote on the topic of trauma in contemporary Asian literature. She was also this year the winner of a prestigious CHA dissertation fellowship. All my colleagues joined me in congratulating Jocelyn on her doctorate. Congratulations, Jocelyn. Hi, um, I'm Jocelyn Franklin, and I am graduating this year, 2020, with a PhD. Um, I did my master's and PhD here at CU, so I've been here for a long time. 
Um, so my dissertation is titled From Cultural Memory to Lived Reality, Layered Trauma in 20th and 21st Century Haitian Literature. And it addresses the overarching question, how do transgenerational traumas, those that inform cultural identity, how do they interact with or impact lived traumas, ones that we've experienced in our own lifetimes? More specifically, I'm interested in how the formative cultural memory of early moments of uh, colonial oppression, like the Middle Passage, slavery, but also the US occupation of Haiti in the early 20th century, how these moments impact the representation of contemporary or current traumas, um, and I include the Duvalier dictatorship in that, that are contemporary to some of the texts, as well as the 2010 earthquake, the cholera epidemic, and the overwhelming influx of NGOs following those events. And I'm really interested in how this view of trauma as cumulative, mutually referential, and so I call it layered, uh, challenges the way that we in academia have tended to think about trauma on a pedestal exemplified by the Holocaust. Um, and it has been a real pleasure to spend the last few years deep in these books, in these um, beautiful prose. My plans going forward uh, <laughs> are to continue trying to find a job um, and uh, to continue applying amidst um, a lot of uncertainty, but I really love doing this work, so I'm going to keep trying to do it. Um, advice for um, graduate students, keep, put yourself out there um, by publishing, just tr send things out, get used to it. Um, you know, your seminar papers are, are um, they're all ready to, you know, ready to be developed into an article. Um, but also get connected into professional organizations that have to do with your areas of interest. There's the Rocky Mountain um, Modern Language Association is a good place to start because it's usually close to where we are. And going to conferences helps you meet people. Between professional organizations and other graduate students, just build some community for yourself. Um, it's so valuable to have other friends to lean on when you're going through challenging aspects of the process. Sometimes it's a joy to work on um, the dissertation, a lot of times, and also a lot of times it's, it's really hard. So it's good to have people to lean on, and the same goes for the job market. And then the other thing I would say is just to remind yourself over and over that literally every person in academia feels the imposter syndrome. All of us feel it. So just keep reminding yourself that and that you belong here and you deserve to be doing the work that you enjoy doing and find joy in it. Um, I've really enjoyed spending the last few years with all of you. Well, our revels are almost ended. There remains only one task for me to perform before bidding you a fond and final farewell. And that is to announce the, the winners of this year's department teaching prizes. Every year, the Department of French and Italian awards two prizes for teaching excellence, one on the professorial side and the other on the instructor side. The committee that chose this year's winners is comprised of Suzanne Magnanini, Elise Bloomfield, Cosetta Seno, and Alina Van Nelson. I want to thank them for this extra effort at a time of great trial and great stress. Uh, and I also want to thank them for the wisdom of the choices that they made. In any event, the two winners are, on the professor side, Charles Samuelson, assistant professor and a specialist in the French Middle Ages, and Susanna Saurini, on the Italian side, and an instructor in Italian. I wish to congratulate them uh, with all my heart. And it seems all the more fitting that we should conclude these proceedings precisely with a, an award for teaching, uh, given the astonishing effort it took for members of our teaching faculty at all levels, professors, instructors, lecturers, and graduate students, to make the shift from in-person teaching to remote and online teaching uh, as quickly as they had to. Uh, your students will certainly know, uh, as we know to our cost, 
that the switch from in-person teaching to remote teaching took place over a single weekend. On the Friday, we taught our last in-person classes, and all classes on the following Monday were taught remotely or online. Uh, my colleagues managed this extraordinary feat with great poise, great efficiency, and uh, great good faith and good heart. I couldn't be more grateful to them. I couldn't be more proud of them. Uh, they are exemplary citizens as well as exemplary teachers, one and all. And there you have it. Uh, we will miss your students, your sons and daughters. Uh, we are sad that we weren't able to say so in person, uh, but we very much look forward to seeing you all in one way or another, in one medium or another again. In the meantime, we wish one and all great happiness, and we hope that you will all pull through the current crisis in fine style. Goodbye.